Okay, guys, we're moving on to question three. Okay, it looks like it's about cake, which looks absolutely delicious. So, Mina is a baker who specializes in baking wedding cakes, right? The most popular cake she bakes is a carrot cake, right, with cream cheese frosting. Study the recipe um, given below and answer the questions that follow. Just checking you can see what I'm seeing. Okay, prep time, cook time, serving time, calories, worth every single calorie. Ingredients, okay, we see that. So it's for the cake and then for the frosting. And then there's some instructions. And they've highlighted a couple of things for us, right? So we must be quite cognizant of that because they don't do that for no reason, okay? And then we have basically some frosting um, instructions as well. Okay, so I wouldn't spend too much time reading this. Um, obviously, do read it. Oh, sorry, I'm knocking everything, yeah? Okay, obviously, do read it, but don't spend, like, excessive time being, like, vanilla essence, sugar, whatever. Don't do that. Just, like, read through it, okay? Let's jump into the questions. Okay, so it says, how long will it take? Let me make sure you can see that. How long will it take to prepare the cake, to prepare and bake the cake? Okay, so what's important, right, is it's just talking about the cake, Okay, it's not talking about the frosting, right? It's just saying prepare and bake the cake. So we know over here, right, the prep time is 20 minutes and the cook time is one hour, okay? But we're not including any of these sort of times around the frosting, right? Because it says that we must leave it to cool. Um, like over here, it says we must leave it to cool and then we have to do some stuff where we mix um, together the ingredients for the, sh um, for the icing, and then there's, you know, this three minutes here and then there's 12 minutes here. So there's like all these other minutes. So don't get stressed about that, okay? Rather, what I want you to do is I want you to just make sure you read the question correctly, okay? It says, how long will it take to prepare and bake the cake, right? So how long will it take? We said it's one hour plus 20 minutes, okay? You can leave it like that or you can write it out in minutes if you want to say one hour one hour is 60 minutes, and then you say 60 minutes plus 20 minutes, which is 80 minutes. But that's not necessary. They just said the time, right? How long? So you can say one hour and 20 minutes, okay? Then it says, read the instructions carefully and determine at what time Mina will finish baking and frosting, that's important, a cake if she started prepping at 9.30. Okay, so let's just get a highlighter to help us understand exactly all the things that must be included in the time okay so we know prep time and cook time so that's for the cake but once the cake comes out it says bake for 60 minutes so you might be saying marg's like you're going through this really quickly like how are you seeing all these numbers so i'm just literally scanning over and looking for the word minutes okay if you cannot do that the way that i'm doing it read every word okay you have time to do that don't stress okay there's another 25 minutes. Let me just move this so that we can keep seeing the same thing. Then I see one minute over here. I see three minutes over there. And I see 12 minutes over there. Okay? So just check that you can't see any other minutes. I'm just quickly scanning. I can't see any other minutes. So those are all the minutes that are involved in this preparation process. Okay? So let's add all of them together. We see that this is out of four marks. So we know that it's a fair amount of work. Okay? Okay? So I'm going to say 20 minutes for prep, right, plus one hour. That's for cooking, okay. Then I'm going to say plus 60 minutes, right, the 60 minutes over there. Let's just see. Oh, no, you see, look, now look. I've added in it twice, right, because it says you bake for 60 minutes. And now I've already calculated Included that 60 minutes. So you can't put that in twice. Very important. Okay. So we've actually already done that one. Okay. That was a good mistake to spot. Okay. Then 25 minutes. Then one minute, three minutes, and 12 minutes. Okay. Plus one minute. Plus. I can't even remember. Sure. I'm having short term memory loss here. Plus 12 minutes. Let me check if that's correct. I think I'm lying over here. No, you're all right. Okay. So now we need to calculate how long each of these times are when we add them together, okay? I'm just gonna convert this into 60 minutes because it's easier, right, when we're doing these calculations to make sure that it's all in the same units of measurement, okay? So let's quickly jump in and do that. 20 plus 60 plus 25 plus one plus three plus 12. And I am left with 100, or not left with, it results in 121 minutes. Now. Let's convert that into hours. So importantly, we even we use it over there. 
one hour equals 60 minutes. Okay, so if we convert this into hours, we have to divide it by 60. Okay, so we know that there is two hours because 60 times 2 gives us 120. So it's two hours and one minute. Okay, you could just say 121 divided by 60, but then it gives you this weird little number here because this is showing as a percentage of an hour. So it's like, what's going on? So you just use the two there, right? And then go two times 60, ah, it gives me 120. So I know that 120 of the 121 is for two hours. I have one minute left and that is how much I need to add to my 930. So I have to say 930 plus two hours and one minute, okay? That's how you can write it. Remember, this is how we write hours and minutes. Hours like that, minutes on that side. So that is 11.31, sure. That is a very, very specific time, okay? 11.31, that is that, okay? Let's now move on to 3.1.3. So it says, study the given Fahrenheit oven dial below. By how many degrees Fahrenheit does the dial need to be turned to reach the required temperature to bake the cake? Okay, so now what we need to know is what is the required temperature? And there it is. So it needs to be 350 degrees Fahrenheit. But here, from what we can see, right, you have to look where the arrow is pointing, is 250 degrees Fahrenheit. So we say 350 Fahrenheit. That's what we need, right? I'm just going to draw a little arrow so that you know what I mean. That's what we need. And let us subtract what we have. And that gives us 100 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? If you don't believe me, which is fine, you don't have to believe me, right? Put it into your calculator. You'll get the same amount as I got there. Okay, remember always to put in your units, right? Because saying 100 means what? 100 what? 100%? 100, 100 what? Yeah, degrees Fahrenheit, important. Okie dokes. Let's now look at Mina's oven... Let's now look at 3.1.4, which says Mina's oven works in degrees Celsius, okay? So it's in a different type of measurement to Fahrenheit, okay? How about we convert this Fahrenheit, 350, to the nearest 10? This is important, guys. The nearest 10 degrees Celsius, okay? By using the following formula. So what's really nice is they've actually given us the whole shindig over there, which is absolutely fabulous, Okay. So we just plug it into our calculator. Remember, when you plug it into your calculator, don't put units, guys. Don't put units. It's impossible to do that. Don't get hung up on that. So just put it in like this. Can you see? Yeah, you can. Okay, so you put it in like that. And it gives us, okay, when we plug that in, gives us 176.66666 degrees Celsius. Okay? But what did it say? It said to the nearest 10. Now, is this closer to 180? Or to 170. Okay, that six is greater than five. We know we need to round it up to the nearest 10, which is 180 degrees. Okay, let me move this up. Perfect. Okay, so Muna, Mina, sorry, uses the measuring jug shown below. Okay, lovely little measuring jug. What is the capacity of the jug in liters? So we see that the top capacity over here is in milliliters. So we know that it's a hundred, I mean, sorry, a thousand milliliters. But it asks for it in liters. But we know, right? And if you don't know this, you must know in this, guys. One liter equals a thousand milliliters. So the answer is one liter. Okie dokes. Sorry, let me just make sure you can see this. I hope you could see the previous questions. Okay. So one gram of cake flour equals this many milliliters, right? So basically, Mina's going to use this jug to get the cake flour and to put it into her bowl. But what we know here, and this is quite important, right, is that cake flour is given in grams. So we're going to have to do some conversions, okay? But not a stress, okay? So we know that one gram of cake flour is 2.36 milliliters, okay? Then it says, indicate on the measuring jug by drawing a clear line labeled with the letter B where Mina would measure the amount of flour needed. So we actually have to do a bit of a calculation because 
from the recipe, we know that she needs 360 grams of cake flour. So what do we have to do to this side to get from one to 360? We times by 360, okay? But what we do to the one side in a, in a ratio, we always do to the other side. You cannot change the ratio, okay? So you, you times this by 360. So I say 2.36 times by 360, okay? And it gives us 849.6 milliliters, which is kind of equivalent to 850 milliliters. Okay, hope you followed that, guys. What we do to the one side, we have to do to the other. So you get from one to 360, you times by 360, okay? But we're not finished, right? We have to draw a line. And unfortunately, I seem to have lost my ruler. Oh no, I found it. Excellent. Okay, so it says by drawing a clear line, right, labeled with the letter B. Okay, so let's find 850. 850 is between 800 and 900. So we're going to say B. I don't know if you have to put arrows, but I'm just putting arrows. It looks nice for me. I don't know if that's what was required. But that is the final answer for this question. Okay. I hope you found that helpful. We are now going to move on to question 3.2. Excellent.